You are listening to the Drink Less Lifestyle Podcast with Dr. Sherry Price, episode number 159. Welcome to Drink Less Lifestyle, a podcast for successful women who want to change their relationship with alcohol. If you want to drink less, feel healthier, and start loving life again, you're in the right place. Please remember that the information in this podcast does not constitute medical advice. Now, here's your host, Dr. Sherry Price. Well, hello, my beautiful friend. Today, I am so excited about the topic of this podcast. Many of you have been asking about a podcast on intermittent fasting for women. As you know, earlier this year, I became certified by Cynthia Thurlow on intermittent fasting for women and helping women use this as an excellent tool for not only weight loss, but also weight management. So I want to dive into some principles around intermittent fasting in case maybe you've tried it and maybe you've tried it in a way that wasn't sustainable. However, I find that this is an excellent tool for women in perimenopause and beyond, anybody actually north of 40, because what we know is how we treated our bodies in our 20s and 30s in terms of what worked for weight loss or what worked for feeling our optimal selves oftentimes stops working and doesn't work when you hit 40 and north of that. And that's why a lot of people come to work with me because they know that their bodies are changing. They don't have the energy like they used to. They feel more bloated or they get more puffy, particularly around the midsection. Sometimes they feel puffy in their face. Their sleep starts to get wonky, right? They're just not sleeping like they used to, whether they're getting up more times of the night or unable to fall asleep. They have more brain fog. They have less drive in their life. They used to feel more motivated to get things done and more energetic. And now they're feeling in this phase of their life, the energy level and the motivation level is lower. And a lot of women experience mood swings, right? They might feel like, where's this anxiety coming from? Or if that's not a word that resonates with you, it's like this restlessness. Like I go to do something and then I focus on it and then, oh my gosh, I, I have to get up and move around or I start worrying about something or, you know, the brain just starts jumping topic to topic or the body just feels at unease and that has to keep doing and moving and doing. So it's like a restlessness or an anxiety or like ultra worrying about things that are outside of their control. And for a lot of women, this is a time when life starts to feel less enjoyable and potentially even less fulfilling. They're doing all the things, they have all the accolades at work, their kids are doing well, but somehow they just feel like they are not connected with themselves or something is off. And what I want to say about all of this is that you are okay to feel this way. And in fact, I believe most women feel this way. And so you are far from being alone in this. As you know, I've been going through my own stages of perimenopause and doing different modalities and using different tools so that I can feel better and prevent the weight gain that I know comes a lot of times when our hormones get a little wonky. And working with many women who have entered perimenopause or are in menopause or well-established in their postmenopausal, they always talk about that they hit this like weight loss plateau and their body starts to gain weight and particularly the most unhealthy kind of weight. And that is central adiposity, right? So when you get fat in your midsection, and I call that belly fat, that is the most dangerous type of fat. We know that is the type of fat that leads to cancers, leads to heart disease, leads to strokes, leads to all kinds of chronic conditions. And here's the thing, you may be even experiencing that while you're doing all the things that you've been told are the right things to do. Like my one client, Sarah, she was counting her calories. She was really getting in her exercise. She even said, I'm an exercise fanatic. I don't miss a workout. I am there like clockwork. And I have my macro structured, but the weight wasn't coming off. And she was gaining a bit more weight and a bit more weight despite doing all the things that she's been told are the things to do. Now she hated how this extra 10 to 20 pounds made her feel. And she said it made her feel old and frumpy. 
Now, this wasn't Sarah, but this is some of my clients who will say, oh, yeah, I'm doing all the right things. I started taking an antidepressant for the way I feel, and I started to taking a sleep agent and or using melatonin because I can't fall asleep, and I'm still working on trying to lose weight. I'm just not seeing the results. Now, let me remind you that some of these pharmaceutical agents have side effects. It's not that we don't want to just steer away from them. They definitely have their role and their place. But just know that a lot of these pharmaceutical agents aren't getting to the root cause, which is these wonky hormones. And so if you're taking an antidepressant, it's not doing anything for your estrogen levels. It's not doing anything for your progesterone levels or your testosterone levels. And some of the things you may be doing may be actually contributing to more wonky hormone behavior. So I get why Sarah was struggling with weight loss and I helped her lose those 20 pounds that she wanted off of her body and she wanted them off pretty rapidly, which ladies, we have to adjust our expectations of how fast weight can come off of our bodies as we go into middle age and beyond. It's not going to come off as fast as it did in our 20s, but we got eventually got her there. And I also want you to know that if you feel that gaining weight is an issue for you, I want to tell you, gaining weight is a serious issue, particularly in the United States. Have you seen the stats? Have you seen how many people have developed obesity or heading towards obesity and diabetes and all the chronic conditions that come along with it? It is a pandemic here in our country. And what I don't want is any woman to think that this has to be a normal part of aging. It does not have to be. And I want to give you permission to go after this serious issue in your life if this is bothering you. Gaining weight does not happen to everybody who ages. And so I know it's not a normal part of aging. If you handle your hormones correctly, and if you tailor how you eat, how you move, and how you do the things in your life that actually take care of your body. Because what we do know about the aging process is that our bodies do change. So how we take care of them needs to be updated and needs to change as we hit different milestones in our life. We shouldn't be treating our body like a 20-year-old body when we are not 20 years old. We shouldn't be exercising our body for the exercise regimens that are recommended for 20-year-olds. We should be using the modalities that work for the goals that we want for our phase of life that we are in. So we all know that what worked in our 20s and our 30s, if you're still doing it and you're north of 40, you're probably not getting the results that you got when you were in your younger years. And it's not as simple as a lot of times we have heard it's a calories in, calories out type of story. There's way more to the story than that. And it's not just counting points. I know a lot of people involved in programs that count points, and that could be part of the story, but that's not the entire story either. And what I see a lot of these programs or these regimens skip is that there's a balancing of your hormones that needs to take place, right? We have hunger hormones like leptin and ghrelin. And if those aren't balanced, of course, you will continue to have cravings. There's also other hormones like insulin and balancing your blood sugar. So if we don't balance our blood sugar, our insulin levels will be off. And whenever we have an uptick of insulin, that puts the body into a fat storing mode, right? So it takes glucose out of the blood and stores it as fat. So the higher our insulin levels go, the more likely we are storing fat on our body. So you want to use regimens and tools that are going to get you into a lower insulin state, a lower blood glucose state, and this is going to protect you against developing prediabetes, going on to type 2 diabetes, heart disease, cancers, and all kinds of other chronic conditions. And I'll tell you, after being in pharmacy for almost 20 years, I saw so many times in practice where people just wanted to swallow a pill and think that would fix everything. But what we know is it's our daily habits that have a bigger impact on our overall health. Yes, medicines have a place and when used appropriately and oftentimes short term, but the biggest bang for your health is going to come from your lifestyle. And I love to to refer to it as lifestyle medicine. Am I living and doing the things daily or weekly in my life that I use as medicine to increase my health? and decrease my chances of being diseased. And so I want to talk about intermittent fasting as one of those tools. And it's very timely that I'm talking about this now because I've just opened the doors to my next IF45 for women program, which is going to start on October 22nd. 
And whether or not you sign up for that program, I want all women to consider using intermittent fasting as a tool for weight loss, for weight maintenance, and for greater health. Because it works. I've seen it work time and time again, and I've also seen it work in my own life. So let me review some of the benefits. These are not even all of the benefits. These are just some of the benefits that you will reap when you follow an intermittent fasting protocol. So before I go into a lot of the benefits one can achieve through intermittent fasting, I just want to say that I am not recommending this to everybody. You should consult with a healthcare practitioner before starting any new regimen. Particularly, I do not recommend intermittent fasting for breastfeeding women, pregnant women, and women who may have some serious hormonal issues going on. We want to address those first and so that you can get the most success from addressing the most prominent problem. But if you're a woman and you're north of 40 and you're thinking I'm feeling a little fluffy around the middle is what a lot of women will tell me. I'm just feeling a little fluffy. My jeans don't fit as well. I don't feel as good in my body. I feel like I'm gaining weight or I'm feeling a little more bloated or even times constipation can be a sign. I'm just not as regular as I want to be. I want you to consider intermittent fasting. So first and foremost, a lot of women turn to intermittent fasting, men too, but I'm going to really focus on intermittent fasting for women because it's done differently when we have cycles. And so you want to tweak intermittent fasting if you were a woman, particularly if you were still having your monthly cycle. So first and foremost, it's an excellent tool and one that's been used by our ancestors for a very long time, centuries, right? Is that it really helps to maintain a normal weight. So a lot of times people turn to intermittent fasting simply for weight management. You can use intermittent fasting to have weight loss, and then you can modify it again for weight maintenance. And it's just an easy tool to do that doesn't take a lot of time, commitment, stress. Once you get the hang of the particulars, it's very easy to implement into your life. And if you really think about it, you are just restricting the amount of time in which you eat. So there are times of the day that you're not eating and there are times of the day you are eating. So a lot of times people might refer to this as like a fasting time and a feeding time. So what are your fasting hours and what are your feeding hours? A nice benefit to doing it this way, what a lot of people find is that in just defining when they're going to be feeding and when they're going to be fasting or not eating is that naturally they tend to eat less calories even if they're not measuring it. But once they do measure their pre-intermittent fasting schedule versus following an intermittent fasting schedule, a lot of people will find that they are more satiated, which means they're not hungry. They have less cravings, particularly around sugar and carbs. And so they just don't desire more food. So they just don't consume more food. I was just at a three-day retreat with some ladies I wasn't running the retreat. I was an attendee at the retreat. And I was surprised when I was talking about hormones and intermittent fasting, how many women at that retreat were doing intermittent fasting and how well it was working for their goal of weight management. And when you consider the statistics of what, you know, the CDC puts out there in other organizations about the obesity rate here in America that keeps on rising, right? It makes us pause and really consider like, what do I want for my health? now and going forward? And how can I set myself up for success now in moving forward in something that's so easy just to say is, oh, I'm not eating in these hours, but I am eating in these hours. Weight loss does not have to be difficult. And oftentimes we make it seem that it has to be difficult and follow these certain protocols and follow all these regimens, but we really want to boil it down to what can we follow? What can we do? And so that we achieve the results that we want. So weight management is by far the number one reason a lot of people decide to adopt intermittent fasting as a tool for their health and weight management. Another benefit of intermittent fasting is that your body has improved insulin sensitivity. If you follow the work of Dr. Jason Fong, he talks about how he's gotten these patients who were morbidly overweight having type 2 diabetes, and just by following an intermittent fasting protocol, no pills, 
No other things, of course, pills to manage their diabetes, but no additional like weight loss pills, no Ozempic, no of these other fancy GLP-1 agonists that are out on the market, but just by introducing intermittent fasting, they lost so much weight and a lot of them went on to eliminate their type 2 diabetes. Just get rid of it. It just goes away because of this improved insulin sensitivity. So we know when we have high blood sugar, we're going to get high insulin. And that's over time is going to make us insulin resistant, where our body's not going to be listening to the amount of insulin. It's going to need more and more and more. And we know that insulin moves glucose into fat and stores it as fat in our bodies. And so we become insulin resistant over time. And that sets us up for type 2 diabetes. So when you're following intermittent fasting regimen, not only is it helping with weight management, but it's also helping to prevent diabetes. Another key benefit of intermittent fasting is that it helps regulate hormones. Many of the women that I've worked with will report regular menstrual cycles, reduced PMS symptoms, reduced perimenopause symptoms, reduced anxiety, greater happiness, more joy, less weepiness. And if you think about it, it's really resetting the body's natural cycle of we're eating now and we're not eating then, right? Just like our ancestors did, right? They went and they had to hunt for their meals and they can only hunt because they didn't have artificial light back then. So they can only hunt in the daytime. They would kill their meal, bring it back to the camp, prepare it, and then eat it. And so they did this maybe once, twice a day at max. So their eating windows were naturally less than what we have now, which food is widely available 24 seven. You can go to the grocery stores. You can go to the convenience stores. You could go to the gas station, plenty of food all around. You can have DoorDash, Uber Eats, anyone else come and bring it to you. And so this constant access and availability to food and alcohol causes us to be dysregulated in terms of how much we consume it. And then that throws off our hormones. So a great benefit to feeling better using the tool of intermittent fasting is this hormone regulation. Another benefit to intermittent fasting is that it really helps with cellular repair and longevity. So you may have heard of this term autophagy. Fasting, when you do intermittent fasting, it triggers this cellular process of autophagy, which involves the removal of damaged cells and cellular components. So when you are in that fasted state, you are allowing the body to basically clean up any damaged cells, any mutated cells, any precancerous cells. In that fasting state, your body is able to concentrate on cleaning those all up and flushing out and detoxing the body. Your body is not able to do this autophagy process when you are in a constantly fed state. And I want us to really think about that, right? Think about when you wake up and when you have your first consumption of food, right? Or a shake, right? When do you first consume food? How quickly after you wake up? And then when you go to bed, when's the last consumption of food or a beverage or even alcohol, right? That is calories. That is not a fasted state. You may not be eating food, but if you're drinking alcohol, that is not a fasted state. Your body still needs to be online, breaking down the chemicals coming in, and metabolizing that and siphoning out what it gets rid of and what it keeps. And with alcohol, it doesn't keep much except for the calories because there's no nutritional value to it. And so if we are constantly in a fed state for the 12 hours that we're awake or even 16 hours for some people, they might be eating right when they wake up and snacking and eating and snacking and eating all the way till bedtime. That does not give our body enough time to stimulate this autophagy process. And if you think about it, we take in a lot of chemicals and substances all day long. Our body wants to detox and eliminate that, and it needs time and resources, meaning energy, to do that work. And so if we want to live a long, healthy life, it's going to require of us that we don't eat continuously. Another benefit of intermittent fasting is that it has been shown to improve our cardiovascular health. So we see reduced blood pressure, we see reduced triglyceride levels, we see improved cholesterol profiles and panels when people engage in intermittent fasting. Another benefit are cognitive, cognitive benefits. Yes, this helps our brain. 
Intermittent fasting has neuroprotective effects and supports brain health. It enhances brain-derived neurotropic factor, BDNF. You may have heard of this, which is the ability of the brain to generate more brain cells and create new pathways in the brain and create new learning. So it enhances learning, it enhances memory, and it's been shown to regulate our moods. So we talked about cardiovascular health. We talked about cognitive or brain health. It's also works wonders for our metabolic health. Intermittent fasting is amazing at cleaning up our health markers that cause inflammation and oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is toxic to our cells. It kills our cells. And so by following an intermittent fasting protocol, we get significantly less inflammation in the body and less oxidative stress that builds up. Now I would tell you, I have had clients who have autoimmune disorders. I have had clients who have arthritis in their joints. And when they do intermittent fasting, that joint pain, that autoimmune condition starts to calm down. They have less pain and more flexibility and mobility in their joints. And just think about that. We are reducing the amount of inflammation in the body. So inflammation, what does that look like? It's puffiness, it's redness. So a lot of people say they feel that their face is less puffy, their midsection is less puffy, they're less red, right? All of that are signs of inflammation. And it's staggering to know that a recent article was published stating that less than 7% of Americans are metabolically flexible. So we really want to focus on our metabolic health and intermittent fasting is an excellent tool to do that. Another benefit to intermittent fasting is it's simple and it's completely flexible. It's just really easy to implement into your lifestyle. It doesn't require strict meal planning. It doesn't require calorie counting if you don't want to. It doesn't mean you're eating cardboard boxed food, right? Or a specified food diet. And that's why a lot of women love it is because of the flexibility in that they get to choose when they're going to eat, how they're going to adapt it to their lifestyle. So whether they work day shift, flex shift, night shift, whether they want to eat with their kids or not with eat with their kids, this is something that you can incorporate into your lifestyle that is sustainable. Another benefit of intermittent fasting is appetite regulation. Some individuals find that intermittent fasting helps them recognize true hunger and true hunger cues. And this helps them to reduce the mindless snacking and emotional eating. This is huge. How many people just want to eat a piece of cake or have some cookies or eat some ice cream when they're not feeling happy or not feeling good, and they look to food to make them feel better. And here is just one tool, just one tool we're talking about that can help with that appetite regulation. And for a lot of people, it reduces those cravings and really puts an end to this mindless snacking and even mindless drinking. I will tell you that in this last IF45 for women program, every single woman in that program decreased the amount of alcohol they drank. They felt better and all of them lost weight. That is the impact that intermittent fasting can have. And so the last point I want to make about the benefits of intermittent fasting is it really has been shown already to improve longevity and aging. So there's a lot of research going on in this area, but we already have studies where it shows that intermittent fasting has extended one's health span and it's improved overall aging related health markers. And it's thought to do to this increase in telomere length. Because as our telomeres shorten when we age, it's a sign that we are reducing our health span and potentially reducing our lifespan. And so through intermittent fasting, it actually reverses that process and increases our telomere length. So not only are we living longer, we're living healthier. So we're increasing our health span, not just the number of years we're alive, but the amount of life left in those years. Now, I just want to mention intermittent fasting is not appropriate for people who are pregnant or women who are breastfeeding and certainly should be used with great caution. And anybody with a history of eating disorders, this might not be an effective tool for those individuals. But for a majority of people, intermittent fasting is an amazing tool that helps them reach their health and wellness and weight loss goals. So I wanted you to know all of the benefits of intermittent fasting so you can Really consider if it's time for you to adopt an intermittent fasting into your life. 
As I mentioned, IF45 for women, which stands for intermittent fasting 45, because it's 45 days in length, is open. And you can sign up on my website now at epicu.com. Now I'll tell you, I designed the program for women north of 40 because this is a critical time in a woman's life because of these hormone fluctuations. And what you do in your 40s and 50s and even early 60s sets up not only your brain, but also your body and your health into your 70s, 80s, and 90s. You want to make sure that you are not losing muscle mass in this time because you cannot rebuild muscle mass that you have lost. Your body can only regenerate so much muscle mass going forward. So this is a critical time as we're going through these hormone fluctuations that we are preserving as much of our health as we can. None of us wants to get older, more frail, hunched over, and just stuck in our houses because we can't move or we have overactive bladder. And so we're afraid to leave the bathroom or have access to a bathroom or it's just where everything just hurts and it's just difficult to even get out of the house and get groceries. And so I'm passionate about helping women stay young, look young, feel young, act young, and be incredibly active, not only for you, but also for your family members. You want to be able to enjoy your grandkids and get on the floor and roll around and play with them as you age. And women tell me all the time that they want to keep their health because they want to travel, they want to go on hikes, they want to do things with their husbands, or they want to do things with their families. And as I mentioned, they want to get down on the floor and play with their grandkids and not have to feel like they're stuck on the floor because they can't get up. So they want that mobility and that agility and to be flexible without a ton of pain. And intermittent fasting is a great tool to utilize to reduce chronic pain. It's a great tool to utilize to prevent chronic conditions from even forming. Because what we know about a fasted state, which just means not eating, is that the body is working on cleaning it up and making it healthier. And that's why I decided to get certified as an intermittent fasting coach for women so that I can not only help you achieve your health goals, but achieve your life goals. Health is one thing, right? But your life goals. And what I've learned is that We grew up in a time, many of us grew up in a time where we were told to just graze throughout the day. Having smaller meals and grazing will put on less weight than having bigger meals less often. And that was based on no scientific research. And now what we know is that that was completely horse poop. (laughs) That was just hogwash. The data actually states that eating bigger meals less frequently is what helps us prevent chronic disease, is what helps us maintain our weight, and is the way that we should be following for our health and longevity. And so I remember hearing that message. I remember hearing six small meals a day, just keep grazing, just keep snacking. And then to learn that there is really no study and no research documented that supports this finding. So we've been fed a ton of misinformation. And if you are around my age, you probably grew up with the snack wells era, right? Where we were eating all these snack wells, all these strip out the fat and add in the sugar and the carbohydrates because we thought fat was the enemy. And it turns out that during that time, there was a massive explosion in diabetes and obesity rates. And so if we look at the course of history, right, we could go back to what our ancestors did. They have eaten less often and they felt more full, and so they're less hungry, and they eat less frequently. That's how our bodies were designed, and that's what our ancestors did. They didn't have access to food around the clock like we do now. And it's really staggering to look at the statistics now. When we look at the rates of obesity and how even childhood obesity has gone up dramatically in just the last 30 years, it's really tragic. And a lot of us are trying to do something about it. You know how we know? Because the weight loss industry is one of the biggest gross profiting industries out there. Last year, it was a $72.6 billion industry. Yeah, we are spending money on trying to help lose weight. We're buying the shakes and the bars and the supplements and the plans and the programs and the pills, all with the promise of losing weight. And yet, many people are not getting that result. And so what makes sense to me is what I'm doing. And it's to teach people how to eat, when to eat, how to structure their macros with types of food that they like and that are nutritional and beneficial and they feel good once consuming it. It's not a one size fits all model. 
And the more I learn about food and how I use it and how it feels in my body and how it serves my health and serves my goals, the more passionate I become on sharing this information with others. Because we know many chronic diseases can be prevented. We don't have an environment of health care. We have an environment of sick care. We take care of people only once they become sick. I have heard doctors say, oh, you only have prediabetes. Let's put you on metformin. And they don't educate about lifestyle modifications at all. And they say, oh, it's not as serious until you get diabetes. No, prediabetes is just as serious as diabetes. And the lifestyle piece is just a blip. It's just mentioned, but it's not actually taught on how to do it. It's assumed that every patient out there knows that on what lifestyle modification is. And it turns out we don't. They don't. And so I am a big advocate of intermittent fasting because it does prevent chronic disease and because gaining weight doesn't have to be one's fate and it doesn't have to be your fate. And we know that the power intermittent fasting has on overall health and on overall happiness. And it's very simple. We know food can either give you energy and support a thriving life, or it can drain you and set you up for diseases like cancer. And we know there are foods out there that contain cancer promoting chemicals, cancer promoting substances. And not everybody knows what those chemicals are and how to look for them and what to replace them with. And that's why IF45 for women shows you how to eat, what to eat, when to eat, and why to eat. Because it really saddens me that we were led astray and fed misinformation in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s. And most of us were chowing down on those snack wells thinking we were doing a good thing and how it backfired on us. And we just kept eating it up. Years later, now we're suffering and we're still not making the wise decisions because we don't have the information and the tools to do it. But you can change that anytime and make different choices with informed decisions. Because the food choices we make and the timing of our meal either promotes health or it promotes disease. And so if you feel that intermittent fasting is something that you want to implement into your life and make it a lifestyle habit, then I invite you to look at IF45 for women. It is 45 days worth of teaching topics. Yes, you will get information every single day inside of our Facebook group. I will also be hosting three live Zoom calls with me where you can get all of your questions answered. You'll also be provided a workbook. This will include what intermittent fasting is, the breakdown of it, how to troubleshoot questions, a sample grocery list, an intermittent fasting sample daily journal, and 26 simple and easy to make recipes. You'll also get access to videos with tips and tricks for healthy lifestyle habits. And when you join this round, I will be sending out a book copy of Cynthia Thurlow's book on intermittent fasting, which will go over many of the principles that I've discussed here on this podcast. So when you sign up, that's when I send the book out and you can get started with the pre-work. And this is an amazing time to join because the holidays are coming. And so you want to instill healthy habits before that five, 10 pound weight gain comes on that most women experience around the holidays. And then they wake up on January 1st or January 6th or whenever they come back from vacation and go, ah, now I have more weight to lose. And that's one of the reasons I love this tool is that it is flexible. Your fasting window does not have to be the same day in and day out. And you'll find in the program that we do mix it up because I want to teach you how to use the flexibility part of this tool. I also want to mention that this is the last time I will be doing IF45 for women this year. It's a great time to jump on the health bandwagon and really take your health to the next level. And what I can guarantee you by going through intermittent fasting for women is that you will come out with a great appreciation for intermittent fasting and how to incorporate it long term as a healthy lifestyle for your life with foods you like. And you're going to see health changing results in your life. All right, my friends. The doors to intermittent fasting 45 for women are open. You can go to my website to sign up. As I mentioned, once you sign up, I will send out the pre-work to your house. And then we will all get started on October 22nd. This strategy will change your relationship with alcohol, will change your relationship with food, and help you reach your health goals. Okay, my friends, that's it for today. And I will see you next week. 
If you want to change your relationship with alcohol and with yourself, then come check out Epic You. It's where you get individualized help mastering the tools so you can become a woman who can take it or leave it and be in control around alcohol in any situation. Epic You is the place for women who want to be healthy, confident, and empowered to accomplish their goals and live their best life. Come join us over at epicu.com forward slash epic you. That's epicu.com forward slash E-P-I-C-Y-O-U. I can't wait to see you there.